Well, folks, it looks like I'm doing the Sega Genesis video. <laughs> um, this is all the Sega Genesis stuff that I could find. Um, we're not going to do the 32X or the or the Sega CD stuff with this. It's going to be strictly uh, Genesis. So, um, yeah, come join me. Let's do this. So here we are doing this uh, Sega Genesis video. I figured I'd roll through the, some of the hardware I have first and then we'd uh, go to the games at the end. So I'm going to put a timestamp down in the description so you can skip right to the games if that's all you want to see. And uh, we'll get started. Any memories I kind of have of, of the games, if I, if I can recall any, I'll kind of throw at you as we're doing it. So, first off, I got a bunch of controllers. Um, I don't even know. I was going to catalog this stuff while I was doing this, but that would make this video like four times as long. So, um, We'll uh, just uh, grab a handful and get started. So, as you know, the Genesis, the base Genesis model came with originally a three-button controller. Uh, I have a few of these. I have the three button controllers. I've got uh, three of them here. Uh, this one looks like one of the ones that has the really short cord on it uh, versus this one that has a longer cord. Um, this one also looks like maybe it's a short cord one. Um, some, the cord were only like four, four, four or five feet at the most. Um, uh, this one, like I said, probably came a little later. The cord's a little longer, but these are definitely older because how short the cord is. Um, so we have three of those. Um, let's see. Yeah. Well, what else we got here? Uh, I got a Justifier gun. I don't know if there's if there's a difference between the Sega CD one and the uh, Genesis one. Uh, but it is a Justifier gun. Uh, I don't actually have uh, Lethal Enforcers uh, for the Genesis. I only have it for the Sega CD. So. Uh, but it was with some of this stuff as I was digging stuff out. And uh, so I decided to go ahead and, and uh, throw it on the pile. Uh, here's just uh, one of many uh, RF adapters. I have it like probably seven or eight of these. They're official Sega, you know. For the Model 1, 2, and, and uh, you know, those are different than the plug-ins. I've got probably half a dozen or so. Uh, here's something a little different. There's a three-button controller here. It's got the longer cord, but it actually has the red on the buttons. We have the red buttons here and the uh, red arrows around it versus the uh, standard, uh, standard ones that they just showed that have white. And then the buttons uh, don't have anything filled in on the A, B, and C. This is one of the ones that has the red, uh, which is kind of cool. And uh, I was going to grab this one. Uh, this one is a control pad uh, in the box. This one, the box actually uh, shows the red uh, inlays on it. I don't know if I put a red one in here with the red inlays or not. If not, I might put that other one in here. Um, it looks like this one does have the red buttons as well. Um, you have the red arrows and then the red uh, buttons. Uh, I'm pretty sure what actually came in this uh, three button controller box when I bought it uh, was a six button controller. Uh, they had it at vintage stock and they just had it, uh, the box in the case. And I'm pretty sure that it did because I have a, I have a third six button controller that I don't know where it came from and, I, and when I think back on it I'm pretty sure that's what happened so high performance for high scoring masterfully designed to rest comfortably in your hands the Sega Genesis control pad ready to let the games begin yeah I like I like this box I think I paid a few bucks for it maybe four three or four uh, sometimes you might be able to see it over there on the shelf. Um, 
and uh, let's see here. So that's what I was saying. I have uh, some of these six button controllers. Uh, I have three of them and um, two of them I bought back in the day. I wish I still had the boxes for some, uh, for shame on me. I tossed my Sega CD box and my Sega Genesis box and the uh, two boxes that I had saved for the six button controllers. Um, probably three moves ago. Uh, they were in a basement. The basement was a little bit musty, the, but they weren't, um, they didn't smell musty or anything. I just decided to toss them. And uh, I regret it now, of course. I think a lot of people do that. They toss the box and then later on down the road, they regret it. And then, like I said, I had a third, third one. So something makes me think, like I said, that control pad box had a six button controller in it and I really wanted the box, so I went ahead and bought it, and then I put a three button with the red buttons on it in the box. Um, I wish I would have kept better track on my on my videos of what I picked up in which video, because I've got like, what, 600 videos? I'd have to say at least 400 of those are probably pickup videos, or, or at least half. Um, and I have no idea when or what I picked up and when I picked it up and how much I picked it up for. And I really kind of, uh, I'm dreading it, but I feel like I really need to go back and watch all <laughs> through a lot of my old videos to figure out what I paid for some stuff and, and when I got it and where I got it because I wanted to write it down on, on the list. Um, and then the Fido controller I have sitting here, uh, this one is called a Sega Genesis Mega Fire three button controller. It has the red buttons as well, but it has turbo buttons, uh, switches where, that you can turn on for each individual button. Um, and there's a uh, auto fire off and on, so you can put it on on and hold down the button or just flick it on and it'll just keep firing non-stop. So uh, I picked that up at probably a thrift store or a vintage stock. A lot of the games I have here I got at vintage stock and um, a lot of the consoles I think I got at the thrift store. Uh, this is a, uh, a four, uh, four play adapter. I, I, forget, I forget what they call these. Uh, but it's like a multi multi tap adapter for the Sega Genesis, so four people can play at the same time. Uh, I got this at the thrift store because in the back of it I can see in grease pencil it says two dollars and ninety eight cents on it. Uh, I will probably never use this in my life because how often do you have four people together? But uh, you know it's history, <laughs> and uh, it was three dollars, so we picked it up. I'm throwing all those controllers and stuff in a laundry basket at the moment. Um, more hardware. Uh, here's a Sega Genesis that I dug out. I, I did go through all my stuff, so this is everything. I don't have as many loose uh, loose carts as I thought, and um, there's one game that looks like it's missing that I thought I had um, that I'm not overly concerned about, but I thought I had a copy of it, and I don't know what I did with it. But I actually dug out into the tub in the in the closet in here that I usually never open. It's got a bunch of just peripherals and uh, old uh, doubles and triples of Atari games. But uh, Sega Genesis Model uh, 2 has a little cover on that still. And uh, it's got a price sticker on it still for $3.99. So... Um, I don't know if it came with uh, cords and stuff when I bought it. It may have. It may have just been the deck. But either way, for $4, uh, that's a pretty good deal. Um, I have a couple Model 1s here. And I thought I had a Model 1 that I had painted green. Um, some makes me think... I, I know I did, but some makes me think I might have gave it to my cousin Joe or somebody. Um, it was it was a Genesis, but it, I had painted it green, uh, like an army green. Excuse me. 
But uh, here's a Genesis uh, Model 1. Uh, and uh, it is just your standard Model 1. It has the cover on there. And that's another thing. When I um, tossed my Sega CD box, I tossed like the, um, the little cover that goes over my original Sega Genesis uh, port and um, the extra extension thing that you can that went on there if you put a Model 1 on it. And I wish I wouldn't have tossed that stuff. I really do, but it, it, I did. So, uh, Genesis. So, there's two Genesi. Uh, here's a third Genesis. Um, so, as you can see, I'm not hurting for Genesis anyway. Um, this one has the high-definition graphics on it. Now, I don't remember what the deal was with the high-definition graphics. I don't remember if it actually had better graphics or it had better sound. There was something with it, though, for the, that the ones that say high-definition graphics on them uh, had a leg up over the, over the uh, regular ones. And I don't remember what it is offhand. This one's still got, like, part of a clip on the bottom. Uh, probably from when it, it could have been attached to a Sega CD, either Model 1 or 2, I don't know. Um, still has the red cover. Alright. Come on, yeah, this is exciting. Come on. I hope the music hasn't been too loud. Uh, I, like I said, I'm really trying to hit you with the hardware first. And then we'll uh, go to the uh, saw the uh, games. Um, so this here, this here re represents me cleaning spit with spit on my Sega Genesis and Sega CD Model Two. Uh, this here is my original console, my original Sega CD, and my original. Uh, Genesis that I bought when I was 18 years old and the Sega CD probably when I was 19 so this is 24 years old and it holds a special place in my heart because I don't have any of my other original consoles that are back this far uh, my original Nintendo I don't have it I don't know what happened to it uh, it quit working a long time ago, and I think I gave it to some guy for parts from, for a uh, few bucks. Um, all the Nintendos I have now are ones I either bought, um, I think I bought one at Game Exchange originally when I needed a new Nintendo, and then I've either bought them at the, at the thrift store or uh, found them here and there or been given them. Uh, but... My uh, Se uh, Super Nintendo, it crapped out on me about 15 years ago. Probably about 10 years after I bought it. Um, it just, something happened to the, the video board and it just, everything would just be scrambled uh, when I would start it up. And uh, then the sound started cutting out. I don't know if it got wet or what the hell happened to it. I don't think it got wet because I kept it in a box up in the closet. Um, so my Super Nintendo box up there and and uh, is my original box but the uh, Super Nintendo in it is not my original and uh, I'm trying to think I didn't I didn't own a Dreamcast or a Sega Saturn uh, back in the day I don't have my original PlayStation because when I got my PlayStation 2 it played PlayStation 1 games and I gave it away to somebody else who didn't have a console and uh, what you know thought it would be cool to have one and so I gave my PlayStation 1 same thing happened with my PlayStation 2 I I bought a PlayStation 2 Slim and turned around and, and gave the PlayStation 2 to my girlfriend at the time um, but it had some hiccups uh, it wouldn't play uh, the blueback PS2 disc and it was starting to have trouble playing PS1 discs. And I think the lenses were just getting out of alignment on it. So I didn't mind giving it up to her, but it was my original and it's gone. So really, aside from this this uh, Sega right here and my 360 and my PS3 and 4, 
that I bought in the last 10 years or so, I don't have any original consoles that I bought when I was a kid. So this is it, and I'll just go ahead and show it. <laughs> I know I kind of talked about it for a second, but it holds nostalgia for me. Um, this is my my original Sega Genesis that I bought. I didn't buy these at the same time. And then I bought the Sega CD at Toys R Us. Um, the uh, Sega Genesis I actually bought at Walmart. Um, it still works and works great. I don't put a lot of miles on it. I always baby a lot of my systems, so I don't... Uh, it always kind of bums me out when they, they kind of die because I baby them so much, but uh, uh, this one's still kicking and working strong. I looked online and I actually bookmarked some, some laser lens assemblies uh, for it. I thought about buying an extra one or two just in case the laser does go out because I heard that's the biggest issue. And then, um, if it did go out, maybe I could swap it out or something. But, um, yeah, that is my original Sega and, uh, Sega CD. And I am showing the Sega CD because it's attached. It's not because I'm going to do all the games, too. Because we've done the games once, and I think I might do it again at another time. Because I don't know how much time, uh, or how many games I might have picked up since I did the video. Which I don't think would be too many, but you never can tell. Um, Alright. Sorry, folks. i got to dig for a second. Alright. So, here is a beast that I bought early, early, early on when I started doing YouTube. Um, this might have been within the first like six or eight videos that I did. I bought this sucker and uh, I paid a penny for it and it, I still don't mind that I did but I've seen a couple guys on a Facebook page that I am uh, uh, hooked on for uh, local traders and retro guys. I saw a guy uh, that scored one of these uh, recently uh, with uh, some games and stuff for like $10 and I paid $150 for this thing but I'm happy to have it. Uh, it's it, it was in working condition. When I was pricing these and looking for them, to find one in working condition was was almost ridiculous and um, part of it is, is there's some um, little rubber bands and stuff inside it and those can uh, dry out and break after a while and you gotta repair them or what have you but um, this is my Sega and Sega CD Model 1 with a Sega Genesis, a high definition Sega Genesis on it and I paid like I said 150 for this uh, I asked the guy to put the high definition graphics Genesis on there um, like I said I don't really remember what the difference is per se um, so I can't say uh, why it's better, but I, I remember back in the day, uh, eight, seven years ago, I knew why, but I can't think of it. This is the Sega Genesis Power Base Converter for the Model 1. Um, this will allow you to play Sega Master System games on your Sega Genesis, and it also has a card reader. Um, I know this works for the carts. Uh, something makes me think that it had an issue with the card reader, but maybe it didn't. Um, it's not like I've really checked it out. It, either that or I knew somebody that had an issue with theirs that had, there was an issue with their card reader thing on it. Um, it's weird because it's got a pause button on the power base converter. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Um, alright, so we got a couple more little pieces of hardware and then we're gaming it, folks. Alright, folks, so the next uh, piece of hardware, uh, when I was talking controllers uh, a little while back, uh, I did a video on controllers for, uh, for a response video to Chris, and um, I showed some different controllers, but I didn't show this one. Uh, this is my Sega... Genesis six button arcade stick. I got this pretty early on as well uh, when I was uh, starting to collect and do YouTube 
and uh, it's just the, the uh, controller in the uh, box no uh, like little instruction book or anything with it and uh, looks like one of the little feet came off but it's still in the box so yeah this has um there's six buttons and then it's got turbo buttons that you can turn on for each one um, as well as you can adjust the uh, turbo speed so that's pretty cool I'm not a huge uh, joystick fan though so um, I didn't use it a lot and then the last piece well the last piece of hardware sort of it is this Genesis Model 3 I bought this the same day I bought the um, my uh, heavy six or Atari and all the games and uh, wait no it might have been it was in the same week because I bought it and when I went in and bought this, the guy was telling me that they had bought an Atari in, and then I went back and bought the Atari a few days later. Um, but this is a Genesis Model 3 in box. Um, there's no, like, instruction book uh, in there. I don't know if it actually came with one. But it's got the, uh, the Genesis Model 3, which are super small. <laughs> and then it's got the Genesis uh, Model 3 um, controller which is six button it's a little smaller and it has a turbo uh, switch on it as well uh, it just tr turns turbo on for all the buttons <laughs> uh, the outlet plug and then another uh, adapter it looks like I, there is the uh, receipt in here um, I paid thirty dollars for this I guess so we paid thirty dollars for this model uh, three Genesis in the box. All right, I'm having a little problem here because this office chair that I'm sitting in, uh, I think, might be on its last leg, and I feel like I'm about to fall out of it, like I'm sitting on on the end of a freaking flagpole or something, and just teetering away. Okay, so I think we got a little bit of time. Can't tell. Yeah, I think we do. Uh, just a couple seconds here. Um, this is the last uh, piece of Genesis hardware I do have. Um, this is definitely a treat for me to show. Um, <laughs> this here. Uh, I left it in this bag even because when I got it I put it in this bag um, so I could, would keep everything together to know this is what was sent to me but back in the day um, Bithead 1000 uh, shortly after he did a, a hundred subscribe got a hundred subscribers was going to do a contest and um, it went on for a little while. I think he ended up getting 200 subscribers before he was able to really even get the 100. Because, I mean, it really, once he took off, uh, it's he started getting a crazy amount of people coming his way. And uh, he did a contest, though, uh, that he called Will It Work? And the, he, I think he still has the videos posted. Um, and he took five different items and did different various, uh, we'll call them stress tests, to them. <laughs> And then he uh, hooked them back up to see if they would work or not. And uh, he uh, left a Atari game in the back window of a, of a hot, hot car at 130 degrees. He uh, froze a, I'm pretty sure it was a Nintendo 64 game, like solid in a block of ice. Uh, he soaked a game in the bog <laughs> at his friend's house. Um, I think it was a Genesis game. And then he he took a Nintendo cartridge and backed over it with a car or rolled over it with a car. Um, and then the final thing he did is he took a Sega Genesis and he uh, threw it like a discus on a on a parking lot and and let it bounce. I think it was a parking lot. It might have been a field. I don't remember if it was hard uh, hard concrete or not. And um, 
then uh, at the end, uh, he let those go, and then the next video was him showing if they worked or not. And the follow-up to that was, we all got to guess on the five things, whether or not they would work. Uh, he microwaved one, too, I remember. I don't remember what it was, but he microwaved something. And, um, and I guessed on them, and it was pretty fun. And it turned out that I actually got all, all of them right. Well, a lot of guys got them right. I mean, there was about probably a dozen or, or uh, you know, two dozen guys that got it right. And he uh, drew names out of a hat. He, he, he put the pieces of, he put everybody's name on a piece of paper and drew them out of a hat. And uh, and whoever uh, got first place, second place, third place won something. And um, I don't remember what the other two systems he gave away because they were systems that he gave away. But the third place system that he gave away was a Sega Genesis. And it just so happened that I was the lucky recipient from Bidhead 1000 uh, in his Will It Work contest. I was the third place winner of a Sega Genesis. And uh, so when I won, uh, I asked him, I said, uh, would you mind sending me the one you threw in the video? Because it still worked. And he goes... He goes, you want the one I threw? And I go, yeah, sure. I go, it's kind of like a prop, you know? And he goes, yeah, I'll send it to you. So um, this is my winnings from the Bithead 1000 video. He sent me a controller, a three-button controller, uh, with the long cord, <laughs> um, an adapter, and the RF hookup. And then here is the actual Genesis that he... He gave the old discus toss, too. And uh, if you look real close, there is some, like, gravel, like, road rash scuffing right here on this corner and right here as well. Because I think when it hit, it tumbled. Um, it's got some nicks on it and some scratches on the front. But, yeah, this came from from Bithead uh, when I won it in his contest and I've always kind of kept it separate from the other stuff so I know for a fact that it was the one that I got from him and uh, I still really uh, appreciate it and I just I hardly ever win anything so when I won this it was like really cool and uh, so he was like yeah sure I'll send you the one that I threw why not so uh, I'm going to sign off uh, for a second, and then we're going to restart it, and we'll do the games. So basically, it took me about 30 minutes to do the first part. I'm going to try to roll through the games pretty quick, and we'll see what's going on. I might have to swap this chair out, because <laughs> it feels like it's going to freaking fall out from under me. So, all right, I'll be back. All right, folks, Adam's back. Uh, he lowered the chair so it's not teetering so badly. Uh, I hope I'm in the shot <laughs> um, and not out of it. I'm going to blind grab games and just roll with it because I don't really know uh, how these are organized. Like I said, if I remember anything, I'll tell you. A lot of these I got at Bennett Stock. So um, the first one I got here is a uh, quack shot for the Genesis. Um, I was finding these games. When, when Vintage Stock first came to town, they had, they had a ton of, uh, of games for the um, Genesis and, and Nintendo and everything. And it just seemed like over time they, uh, they uh, just faded away. But um, yeah, it's complete. I was kind of looking at the back because I couldn't tell if that case art is... It looks like maybe it got a little bit water damage, but maybe not. I don't know. Could just be age. It looks a little water, watered in there. Um, maybe not water. It just looks like it's got kind of a, almost looks like a stain. <laughs> um, I definitely got this at Vintage Stock. I didn't even know that it was a Mega Drive game when I bought it. It's the only Mega Drive game that I own, but it did work on uh, quite a few of my uh, Genesis, so I didn't worry about it. Uh, and that's the game Columns. For the Mega Drive. 
Mega Drive uh, books uh, were longer instead of tall, and at least this one was, and then the cartridge. Only difference really is the logo on it. I mean, the cartridge is the same, and the case and stuff is the same size. So, uh, oh boy, look at this bad boy. Uh, Artin Sania's Super Monaco Grand Prix. Um, I, there was a while where I was buying these black box games no matter what it was because it, it had the old black uh, grid case art and stuff. Um, but uh, a racing game of some kind. I'm not a big into racing games, but what are you going to do? Um, Alright, here's another one. Um, this one is a Marvel uh, title and it is the game... Spider-Man for the Sega Genesis black box. 50% off Marvel Comics. Details inside. It says uh, it is complete. Instructions and everything. I'm not going to pull everything out because uh, we need to kind of do this in a similar, somewhat timely manner. Next game is Cool Spot. Uh, I like this game, and it was pretty, uh, definitely a marketing thing. It's kind of like the Chester Cheetah game or something, but uh, yeah, distributed exclusively by Sega, it says. But yeah, it was complete. I think I showed it. I don't know if I did or not. So that's five. Uh, the next game is a Genesis. I love this game. Uh, that is Road Rash 3. These cartridges are the ones that are a little longer. I don't know why the instruction... Why would you make the instruction book just a hair shorter than it needs to be to fit in there, right? Is beyond me. But it does have the instruction booklet. <laughs> and the cartridge that's six uh the next one is a arena entertainment title uh it is the game alien 3 now i know um the angry video game nerd did a uh video on alien 3 for the uh nintendo uh i don't know if this is any different <laughs> than that uh it looks this looks a little more like Contra, but I don't know. Uh, it's complete, and it did have a, some kind of something in it. A poster or something. I'll probably leave that out, because I started putting the posters in a box all together. So we pull that out of there. So that is seven games. To keep the party going. Uh, next one, Afterburner 2. Like I said, most of these were vintage stock buys. Then I was really into the the older Genesis style uh, boxes. So I kind of went a little crazy with them for a while, even if there were games uh, that I necessarily wouldn't play a lot. Uh, Afterburner is fun, though. And uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I picked up a copy here of Batman Returns. And I also had a loose cart of Batman Returns. Um, so that makes me think I probably picked it up first and then later on uh, found the box copy. It is complete. So that makes me think this was just more of a... No, the Super Nintendo one was beat em up I don't know if this one's just strictly a beat -em up or not, but... Um, here's two... Uh, I'm going to set to the side for a second. Because if I run across ones that I know I had from when I was a kid, I'm going to try to keep them separate. Alright. Here's a game that sucks, and I was told that it sucked when I bought it, but I bought it because it was cheap, and it was a black box thing. Um, it's got a sticker on the end. It's called Fatal Labyrinth. 
It's got a little sticker there. I don't know if I could get that sticker off or not. It's also got part of a sticker on the instruction book. Um, I'm not overly worried about it. Uh, and like I said, it's not the greatest game. <laughs> but uh, we got it. Uh, Vander Holyfield Real Deal Boxing. I think I have an extra card of this as well. Nope, I got a different boxing game. We got a... What is that? Buster Douglas Boxing. Ooh. His big claim to fame. Knocking uh, Mike Tyson down. Uh, or knocking or beating Mike Tyson at one time. <laughs> uh, Evander Holyfield is complete. Super Tech Mobile for the Genesis. Complete. I like Tech Mobile. I don't know. Uh, I never played a lot of Super Tech Mobile on the Nintendo. I do have it. Uh, but I never really played it, so I don't know how that really plays. Uh, here's a game that I just really like the case art on. I don't know if the game's worth a damn or not. And that is a game called Exile. And we are complete. Here's one. Rocket Knight Adventures. <laughs> uh, it is complete. The instruction booklet is a little worked, but not too bad. Um, complete Rocket Knight Adventures. And the reason why I'm not really saying much about these is because, to be honest, I really haven't played a lot of them. I bought them because I was on a, a buying spree, a <laughs> buying kick. Uh, I did play this one a lot, and uh, my cousins owned it, and when I lived with them, I played it. Uh, I think I bought it back later on. Or I never owned it. I think I bought it later on uh, with memories of playing it, but that is this game, Bubsy. And uh, I'm not going to take it out of it. It's in a plastic sleeve. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic sleeve. It is complete uh, because I just think it would be more of a pain than it's worth to try to pull it in and out of there. Uh, trust me, it is complete. <laughs> ah, this game I loved when I was a kid, and I and I have memories of playing it at my cousin's house, staying up friggin' half the night uh, with guys, you know, getting getting kind of happy and playing this. And that is, uh, it's missing the instruction book, but I, I bought it because I, I had saw it in the case, and I, I re just remembered having such great memories of it. And that is Speedball 2, Brutal Deluxe. And, uh, like I said, it's missing the instructions, but I'm glad to have it. Uh, I might look in and find some instructions for it, actually. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. That's 16 games. Let's keep the party rolling. This one I think I got from my cousin at one point, uh, because his Genesis quit working. Um... The case is art is way waterlogged and stuff. It's a not for resale copy of Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, when I bought mine, uh, my Genesis, I got Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And uh, it's just the not for resale copy um, of Sonic the Hedgehog. So, floor. WWF Royal Rumble. Uh, we got guys like The Undertaker, Hulk Hogan. Uh, Lex Luger, Macho Man, uh, Razor Ramon, Shawn Michaels, Papa Shango, Brett the Hitman Hart, and more. I always love wrestling. Wrestling. Six in the Ring Mayhem, it says. Okay, Justice League Task Force. I believe this was a fighting game for a DC fighting game. Um, I don't remember playing it a lot, uh, but it is complete. <laughs> I 
I don't know if I open it wide enough to really show it. Okay. This was a fun game back in the day. Um, I remember playing it at the arcade more than anything. Uh, but I picked up uh, Arch Rivals. And Arch Rivals, like I said, it was a fun arcade game for sure. And it is complete. Here's one I rented, both of these actually. Uh, I rented a lot when I was younger. And then I ended up buying them later on. Uh, but this one I remember renting quite a few times. And that is the Sega Genesis game. Uh, Fatal Fury. Uh, yeah, I was big into fighting games back in the day. And uh, Fatal Fury is complete. Actually, it had a receipt in it. Let's see what we got here. Vintage stock. July 27th, 2013. We paid $5 for this. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I should have kept track of, and I didn't. <laughs> uh, here's another fighting game. I remember playing this at the arcade as well. Actually, at a gas station uh, uh, by my cousin's house. But, yeah, we play this game. And uh, this is the first one I kind of remembered with the, the characters that were digitized, kind of Mortal Kombat style. And that is the game uh, Pit Fighter. Um... Yeah, I remember playing this quite a bit at the arcade for sure. And uh, Pit Fighter. I usually took the, the big dude. I think the the big white guy. Uh, or the uh, guy that um, was more the martial arts guy. Uh, let's see. Alrighty. We're kind of moving through these. I'm trying to go fast or faster or... So we're not here forever. Of course, I can't freaking tell how long. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, the next game is Zoom. I don't really know what this is. I thought the case art was pretty wild. Uh, it's complete. There's a receipt in here as well. Uh, let's see what we got here. On this day, actually it was the same fucking day as the other game, so I must have went to two vintage stocks. I bought Zoom for $3, and then two um, PlayStation games, I'm assuming they're long boxes because the titles don't sound that great, uh, Defcon 5 and Descent for 5 and $4 each. They spent $13. Zoom. Okay. This is my original copy, although the case isn't the original case, uh, that I got with my Genesis of Sonic 2. It's my not-for-resale copy, and it looks pretty... The, the, the game and the instruction book and stuff look really crisp because I, I really took care of it uh, I switched out the case because what ended up happening was there was a point where I decided I wanted to buy Sonic 1 and 2 full retail copies not just the not for sale copies and I ended up picking those up so here is a Sonic the Hedgehog 2 that does not have the not for resale you can see on the front it says not for resale and then the I think the cartridge itself has a sticker on it. Yeah, see? It says not for resale on it. But then the... The retail copy does not have the, the sticker or the little uh, symbol on it that says uh, not for resale. So that's cool. Okay. Uh, here's a few more. Um... Robocop vs. Terminator. Robocop vs. Terminator. Complete. That, that cartridge actually looks quite a bit faded. The cartridge itself looks faded, but the uh, instruction book is in pretty good shape. Uh, I'm not going to sweat it. Uh, Jurassic Park. A complete copy. 
Um, I do have a loose cart of Jurassic Park. And like I said, something makes me think early on I bought some of these loose carts and then I found box copies. So we just um, replaced them uh, or, or swapped them out. Uh, Maximum Carnage for, for uh, Marvel game. Uh, Acclaim Entertainment. Um, I forgot the cartridge was red on this, so that's pretty cool. Uh, red cartridge. I'll take these glasses off. Maybe this hat. I'm going to take the hat off to you. All right. Cruising along. Uh, none of these are our childhood games. Man, there's a lot more here than I thought. <laughs> uh, Crewball. Everybody likes Crewball. Uh, pinball game, Motley Crew. Uh, hits, Dr. Feelgood, Home Sweet Home, and Live Wire. Um, complete. And it has the the uh, receipt in here. Boy, I bought a lot of stuff this day. Thirty six dollars. I bought crew ball for five bucks. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Speaking of, <laughs> uh, for uh, three ninety nine. Uh, it's missing the uh, instruction book. Um, Iron Sword. Why would I have bought that? It must have been a complete copy. Four dollars. Oh, this is a buy two get one sale, so I didn't buy the actual Iron Sword. Uh, Ultima Quest the Avatar, ten bucks. Barbie, ten bucks. I, Barbie I bought in the box because it's over there. Uh, Ultima, I'm assuming, is was also a box copy. Uh, Act Razor two, fifteen dollars. And then. Uh, I bought a Universal RF switch for something. For Universal stuff, I guess. So, we'll put that receipt back in there. Keep this party going. We got a NBA Jam, a fun arcade game. Um, it is complete. Uh, I don't have a lot to say about a lot of these, like I said, because these aren't the ones from when I was a kid. Uh, Paperboy for the uh, Sega Genesis. Instruction booklet is in there backwards, but... Paperboy. Uh, Art of Fighting. I think... I might have gotten this from from Vidium. I, I seem to remember he sent this to me with some other stuff just for the hell of it. Uh, the case art looks like it was printed off. I don't think he did it. I just think that the case art was printed off. But uh, it's the game and then the case art of fighting. Um, I might be able to find a little better uh, case art for that. Um, we have a copy of... Mortal Kombat 3 um, for the Genesis. Uh, I bought all three Mortal Kombats uh, on the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Um, let me see how much time we got. I can't freaking read this backwards. Looks like it's been running 20 minutes. I don't know. Uh, the next game is a Booger Man. Dig it. Two thumbs up to the knuckle. Burger Man. Uh, it's missing the instructions, but it is a uh, game and car cartridge and case. Kid, kid. Kid. Kid, kid. <laughs> Sorry, folks. All right. Uh, 
uh, th here's one. Um, this game here, uh, actually, Mike Gartner sent it to me um, because we, I feel we, we were talking about it, or we were talking about a different Looney Tune game, and he, I or I was talking about, it, I couldn't remember the name of it, and he remembered the name of it, and then um, I think he ended up just sending me this out of the blue, uh, but it is a copy of Buster's Hidden Treasure uh, for the uh, Genesis. And uh, it's complete. And my cousins also had this game. And it was the one I, I couldn't remember the name of. Okay, I keep looking, I'm sorry. But I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to go over or be talking and it's not recording. Uh, the next game is Cyberball. It's one of these uh, older games in the uh, black... Uh, case style uh, complete. Uh, it looks like it's a, kind of a football with side with uh, robots kind of thing. Uh, Strider. This feels like the instruction. Oh, that's like the instruction. Sense. Sometimes they feel light, and I think maybe it's missing the instructions, but I'm not that. I'm not always right, so that one did have the answer. So, so far, we've only been missing the instructions, aside from the art of fighting, uh, in the speedball game. Uh, here is Street Fighter 2, um, the new Challengers. I don't, I don't think it was called new Challengers, but it's the one that had the, ex the extra people added in, Cammy and, and the other people, I don't remember who always added uh, the DJ or yeah, DJ Cammy, uh, Fei Long, and T Hawk. Um, complete copy. Sorry if I'm leaning out of frame because I just dumped all those on the floor. That's awesome. Okay. Here's one, uh, I thought the case art was kind of cool, and it is a little bit different, but it's this game Zero Tolerance, Kill or Be Killed. And it has the receipt in here as well. We paid $3.99 for uh, Zero Tolerance, and we bought Mission Impossible for the Nintendo 64. For five bucks. I don't even know where that is. I don't even know if I have that over there. Maybe I do. Oh, this one came from 8 Bit Goomba. Uh, I, I traded some other stuff to him. I don't remember exactly everything, but I remember this was one of the things that I traded him for because uh, it was just such a quirky looking game case. Uh, but it's this game called King Sam and the Big Catch. Uh, I traded uh, some stuff to him. I don't remember exactly what the what all I traded him, but this is one of the items I received in return. But I just thought that case art was pretty sweet. So, fishing manual, it says. Not an instruction manual. Uh, the next game is Flashback. Now, this game came out on on the Super Nintendo, uh, the um, Sega CD, and I think maybe uh, it also came out on the 3DO. Um, it's complete. I'm pretty sure I have it on the Sega CD. I don't have it on the 3DO. I would like to have it on the 3DO. Um, Clax, this is one I picked up not too long ago, maybe about a year ago or less. Uh, out at the Belton Vintage Stock. Uh, it's complete. Okay, the next one we got here is World of Illusion, starring Mickey and Donald Duck. Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. Um, it's complete. Oh, boy. 
Okay, here's a couple more I am not going to take out of these plastic sleeves, but they are complete. Uh, Championship Pro-Am. This is basically RC Pro-Am from the Nintendo on the Genesis. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it, I think they might have upgraded the graphics just slightly, but pretty much, if you look at the back, you can see, I mean, it pretty much is just RC Pro-Am. <laughs> so... The next one is uh, Vector Man 2. Uh, these cardboard boxes were for the birds as far as I was concerned. I don't know why they uh, started making the cardboard boxes the norm. Uh, it was kind of a bad choice in my opinion. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay, we're getting close. Getting closer. Sorry if you're looking at my back. Uh, Genesis, Genesis, Genesis. I, I should have organized it better because now I'm having to organize, not organize it, but kind of look at it before I grab. Alright. Okay. So I'm just going to show you some loose carts. I really don't have that many loose cart games. And really, I think I bought most of these and cannibalized the uh, case for other games and just uh, kept the games because they're games. But I really don't care about them. Like College Slam. Um, we've got a copy of Home Alone <laughs> on the Genesis. Um, Mario Lemieux uh, Hockey. Um, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. And then we have a couple here. Uh, this one, I don't remember where it came from, but we have a Looney Tune game, Desert Demolition, starring Roadrunner and the Wily e. Coyote. And then we have a Advanced Dungeons and Dragons game, Warriors of the Eternal Sun. I don't know what this is exactly. And then um, this one, I'm looking to buy a actual case and the instructions and stuff for it. Uh, but I bought the cart a, lo a long while back at Flea Mart when they were still open. And that is the game uh, Fantastic Dizzy. And it's a weird cart shaping. You can... they. They don't fit in replacement cases. I mean, I've, I've seen people try... There's a couple games, like, you'll see another one here, uh, that, that are weird shape, and you have to buy the original case so they don't fit in it right. Um, let's see... I need a little more air. I feel like it's getting warm in here. It's because I've been doing laundry and all sorts of shit all day long, so it's real hot in here. <sighs> all right. Comic Zone. We are just cart and uh, case on this one. Now, there are one or two here that I know I I, uh, I made the case art on them, and this is one of them. Uh, and that is the game... Uh, actually, I don't know... Yeah, I did. Uh, it's the game Castlevania Bloodlines. I, I actually printed that, this case art off, but we got the... Uh, another one, Hard Driving. Uh, my cousins had this, and we played the shit out of it. 
it was more about just figuring out different ways to wreck the car and watch the, the uh, replay of the wreck. We spent a lot more time doing that than anything else. I'm going to pull some of these and set them over here. This is real professional. Um, Winter Olympic Games. I just like the case art again. It looks pretty wild. Um, complete. Uh, excuse me. All right. Final push. More uh, of these ones in the box, in the uh, cardboard box. We've got the first Vector Man as well. And we have a mega hit series uh, X Men 2 The Clone Wars. And um, I always wanted a real retail copy of this. I got this uh, mega value one at. Um, at vintage stock. Okay. Mario Andretti Racing. Uh, no, no instructions. Tailspin. complete. I have quite a few of these Disney titles. Speaking of Disney title, Aladdin. There's a Looney Tune title, uh, Tasmania. Uh, just a case and cart. Altered Beast. Definitely Genesis Classic, a must, must have. Complete. Green Dog, the beached surfer dude. Green Dog Shreds, it says. Complete. Oh, Green Dog. Uh, here's my not for resale copy of Sonic 2 that I talked about a little bit ago. Um, this one is not water damaged or screwed up. And actually, it is really nice looking. Uh, I still have about 16 or so games here uh, that were from my youth, uh, from when I was a kid, before I started this whole recollecting thing. And I'm going to show you those here in just a sec. But we've got a few more left here. We got Out of This World. I remember playing this on the Super Nintendo more than anything. Uh, this one is missing the directions, uh, but it was $5 uh, receipt. So I did keep a few receipts here and there. Um, another one of these black uh, case art style uh, games, Twin Cobra. Complete. Some of these have the hang tabs on them, some of them they're broken off. Alright, this was one that I really did want to kind of sought out. Uh, it is four player at the same time, so I could use my multi-tap for this if anybody wants to get four people together uh, play Genesis. Uh, 
That is the game Gauntlet 4. And uh, the Gauntlet 4 actually, I think, has a little bit of a... And instead of just running... Um, running... Um, dungeons, there is a little bit of a story that you can do. From what I remember. It says... Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is. It, there's more of a storyline as opposed to just going through dungeon after dungeon after dungeon. Uh, so that was why I kind of wanted it. And uh, it's Gauntlet. But it's fun. <laughs> the original Gauntlet was, Gauntlet was really a grind. Uh, this one's missing the directions as well. But it is a, a box copy of Ghosts and Ghouls. And here's the one I was telling you. It, uh, there's another one that uh, I knew for a fact. It has a weird case. And I bought a replacement case, but it was the wrong size. So I ended up having to buy an original case from a guy. Uh, just the case. And that is for the game Virtual Racing. And I had the cartridge, but I didn't have a case for it. I don't have the directions. But the cartridge is that weird shape, you know, size. And it's just, uh, there's no... There's no case that fits it. <laughs> and so, yeah, virtual racing. And uh, a final, uh, I bought this one kind of on uh, a recommendation from Mitch Hall, from what I remember. And I know I bought this on the same day I found my copy of Final Fantasy II. And it was out at the Belt and Vintage Stock. And I bought this the same day. I don't remember what I paid for it. But it is the game Mutant League Football. A complete copy. The instruction book, the cover is a little bit torn. But uh, it does have the instruction book. And this is one of the fattest instruction books I've seen for a, <laughs> for a football game. pretty crazy. So, yeah. Mutant League Football. So I got two left here, and then we're to my stuff from when I was a kid. Uh, both of these, I'm pretty sure... Well, I know this one I did. Um, this one here, uh, I, I uh, printed the case art off for it and so uh, it was just a loose cart copy but I put it in a in a case and that is uh, Ghostbusters I think I paid ten dollars for the loose cart the label on it is not the the awesomest but uh, it is a little harder to find this game now uh, for a good price so uh, to just even buy the cartridge for ten bucks was kind of a good deal so, Ghostbusters. And then this one, I'm debating. Um, oh, that's what I did. This one is complete, uh, not complete, it's missing the directions. Uh, but it is a copy of the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game, the Hyperstone Heist. Now, I do have the case and the uh, game. What I had done was... I had created this little insert card thing and put it in here that just has basically the back and the front kind of case art on it uh, to fill up that, that side. So I printed that because I don't have the instruction. And to get the instruction book for this game, people want like freaking $30 or $40 for a damn instruction book. So, yeah. Let's see where we're at here. I'm going to stop it one more time just because that way I can finish this up and I know I have plenty of time to finish it up. So, one more break and then we'll be right back with the, uh, the finishing of the Genesis video. Alrighty, folks. Uh, we had a little bit of a uh, delay. <laughs> uh, the camera was about to die when I shut it off. I mean, it was the battery light was flashing. So, 
had to recharge a camera. So, um, and in doing so, I realized that I did have four more games uh, mixed in with my uh, ones that I had from, from the youth. And so I'm going to go ahead and show those real quick. Uh, I had time <laughs> to put the stuff, some of the stuff back on the shelf while I was charging the camera. So I, I put some of the stuff back on the shelf. But uh, we're going to go ahead and roll through the rest of these here. And I might have a little more to say about some of these. And I'll explain why. I, You'll see. So anyway, uh, the next one here, we got Double Dribble Playoff Edition. This is basically just like Double Dribble on the NES uh, with a little bit better graphics. Um, I think they just called it Playoff Edition. I, I don't really know what the difference is. Uh, between this and, and the NES one, other than the graphics are a little better, and there's a little more color <laughs> uh, used. Uh, but I love Double Dribble. It's one of the few uh, sports games that I really liked uh, on the NES, as well as um, Tech Mobile. And uh, the next one is um, Sonic Spinball. Uh, Sonic Spinball. Complete. Probably another um, uh, vintage stock purchase. Uh, here is Jungle Book. That looks like the case art got a little ripped here or pulled up. Don't ask me how that happens unless you took the case art out of the case. So um, it is complete. And uh, because that case art is a little boogered, I don't know. I might look at it. And see if I can I can uh, smooth it down a little better underneath, or maybe just print off another uh, copy of the case art uh, that's not damaged uh, for my own personal collection. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, Disney games. Uh, there were quite a few. I got on a kick for a while because other people were buying them, uh, and when I was putting these up, I realized that I was missing. Uh, one of them, and then I was like, oh, it must be in those other games, and that's when I looked and saw that there were three or four other games here. Uh, this is the one I, that I realized that was missing, and that is another... Bleh, drop it on the floor. Nice, Adam. Fuck. Ah. Uh, Disney game, and that is Lion King. Lion King. I did a comparison video between the... Uh, Super Nintendo and the Genesis back in the day on this. Uh, it looks like this is one of those more universal cart uh, cases that you can hold the bigger or the regular sized uh, cartridge. Structure book's in pretty good shape, so that one's nice. So that is the uh, extent of the stuff that I really started buying post childhood. Um, those are all pickups, probably from YouTube on. Uh, I might have picked up a couple of those before I started doing YouTube, but I really don't think so, because I think what I have here is what I really picked up. Um, got a story for that, story for that, story for that, story for that. Alrighty, so... So when I started looking here, I realized that I only have a total of 12 games here uh, from when I was a youngster. And the reason why that is is because I was buying uh, for the Sega CD at the same time. I, I, I bought the Genesis and then I bought some games for it and then I bought a Super Nintendo because I, I went to a Kmart of all places and they had one of those kiosks with different Super Nintendo games and Super Metroid was on the kiosk when I was walking through there and I saw it and uh, it was a console buyer for me as soon as I saw that Super Metroid I'm like I'm gonna have to get a uh, Super Nintendo so I ended up buying a Super Nintendo and then about eight months later or a year later not maybe not even a year later I ended up buying um, the uh, there was something under that. I ended up buying the Sega CD. So I was buying for three systems at once, uh, games. I was buying systems for the Genesis. I was buying games for the Super Nintendo. And I was buying games for the Sega CD. Well, because of that, 
the Genesis kind of got shortchanged on the whole deal because uh, I really mainly was buying Sega CD titles once I got the Sega CD, and the Super Nintendo uh, was a Nintendo product, so I was still buying Nintendo games. But Genesis, uh, if they made a version of it on the Sega CD, um, I probably went in and picked it up on there. A couple of these games I do have on Sega CD as well. And we'll, uh, we'll show those as we go. So, anyway, to start off, I bought my Sega uh, Genesis. And I'm pretty sure I only got the packing game with it. I didn't buy like any extra game at the time. So I had Sonic 2 and I think I rented a couple of games. And one of the games that I rented was this, this one that I'm getting ready to show. And uh, it ended up being the first game that I bought after I got the system. Um, and the first game that I bought was the Genesis X-Men. Uh, this game was two-player co-op. Uh, fun, not super hard. Um, I still have the poster. It came with a poster, and the poster's in there. Uh, complete special edition poster. Includes maps and hints. It must be on the back of the poster. Uh, so anyway, this is the first uh, game that I bought. And you got to understand, I was paying retail price for all of these at the time, too. It wasn't like a lot of game exchange or vintage stock type places around or GameStop. Uh, there was Funko Land uh, early on. and um, But, I mean, it was a couple years after even uh, I was buying this to probably my early to mid-20s when I realized what Funko Land was. And actually, a couple of these games are Funko Land pickups um, from when I was a kid. But uh, X-Men, yeah, this was the first game that I, I really bought. And I got stuck on this. This is a game is so freaking cheap uh, on the mojo level. I don't remember what world it is. It might be World 4 or 5. <laughs> Professor X tells you uh, that you need to uh, reset the computer. <laughs> And you get to the end of the, the level after you beat uh, whoever it is. I think I think you do fight Mojo at one point, but I don't know if you play him on that. I'm pretty sure uh, you do though. And then at the end, you walk to this area, and there's like this computer, and you and you, you know, hit it, and it it blows up. But you're you're stuck in this room. There's nothing you can do. You're just sitting in the room. And I think it keeps saying like reset the computer or something. Well. It, 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 it it's kind of cheap and the thing is, is this is back like we're talking 93 so there wasn't like an internet um, where you could really readily uh, get answers to your issues and um, I didn't see this in a, in a like a book or anything that I bought but what you were supposed to do was reset your Genesis and um, there were a couple times when I died and, and had to start over or whatever, and I was like, man, fuck this. You know, and it got to the point where I got frustrated with it. And at one point, I was playing it. I got to that end again, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm hitting the buttons, and nothing's going on. I'm just sitting there. And I decided, I don't know why, but I hit the reset button to just reset the game. Um, and when I did so, a bunch of, like, ones and zeros comes up on the screen that lets, like... I kind of like um, I don't think it's like Matrix style I think it's left and right but it's like binary code kind of comes up and then it boots you into the, the next level um, I don't know if I ever beat this like beat Magneto and actually beat it um, I should maybe actually try to because uh, some makes me think I didn't actually ever finish it because I got frustrated with that level and then once I figured out how to get by it I was like aha fuck you so um I never uh, finish it, I don't think. And then the next pickup was just, um, I tried to buy a lot of two-player games too because I was living with my uh, aunt and uncle and my uncle was uh, 10 years older than me and I'm 18 so he was only 28 at the time and then I had a, a eight-year-old uh, cousin that lived there, um, my aunt and uncle. And uh, so I tried to buy games that were 
two players so we could all, you know, two people could play at the same time or whatever. And uh, this was um, almost an immediate buy um, when I had the money. And that was Street Fighter II, the Special Champion Edition. Um, this one, I believe, um, I don't know if it's different than the Nintendo one, because I have the Nintendo one with the four extra challengers. I didn't buy with the regular Street Fighter II. But this one, I think it was called Champion Edition, because you could play Vega and Sagat and Bison and, and some of the other characters. But I put a lot of mileage on, on this uh, particular cartridge. Um, I took pretty good care of it. The instructions are nice. The label looks nice still. Um, yeah, so that was my second buy. Now, after after that, this gets a little hazy um, as far as, uh, as buying stuff goes. Uh, so I'm just going to grab a couple. Uh, I know I bought this one at Walmart as well. Uh, I would walk over to that Walmart uh, that I got the Genesis from. And I picked this up kind of on a whim uh, at the time. It's not the greatest, but it was it was fun enough. And that is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Like I said, I was really into the um, the fighting game craze in the early mid '90s, like everybody was. Uh, so we got Tournament Fighters, and then this one was one that I remember seeing some previews on it in a uh, <laughs> Electronic Gaming Monthly, and I think the spread that on the Electronic Gaming Monthly that I I still own that particular copy. Uh, was this game was on the cover, but I think it's the reason why I ended up buying it, and that is um, Eternal Champions. This game is one that I also own on the Sega CD. Uh, I have the uh, Sega CD version, but um, it was bought later on, uh, not at, at retail cost. Um, but this was I paid, like I said, I paid retail for all of these at the time, and. Um, Retail being around 50. Um, let's see. That was a Toys R Us purchase. That was a... Ooh, this is a good story. Uh, so anyway, um, I remember I was out at community college and I was talking with some guys and some guys had a gaming magazine and I had never really played this particular arcade fighting game. And um, it's hard to believe, but I really hadn't. I had always played like Street Fighter or uh, Fatal Fury uh, Samurai Showdown, but I had never really played this game, and uh, it was the game Mortal Kombat, and it was getting ready to be released on home console, and everybody was like comparing the differences and saying how Super Nintendo wasn't going to have the blood, and, and this and that, and that there was a blood code for the Genesis one, and that it basically made everything like the arcade, and it had all the finishing moves and stuff. And so I was like, well, that sounds awesome. And I kind of looked at his spread and was kind of looking at it. And I was into the fighting games at the time. Now, this one I did not play with my, my little cousin <laughs> uh, too much. Or if I did, I didn't do the, uh, the real bad fatalities moves. Um, but uh, what ended up happening was I went <laughs> over to the old Walmart. This is back, uh, I was probably 18. Um, I just was on the verge of getting my my first car. Uh, my grandparents were buying, I graduated high school, and they were buying me, a, they bought me a car uh, for a graduation gift, uh, which is very generous, uh, but I didn't get to pick the car out. It was a Ford Tempo, and it ended up uh, exploding because it had a faulty ignition something or other. Uh, not exploding, but it ended up catching fire. Uh, and, t and burning the engine completely out, so um, it was totaled. Um, <laughs> but before I got that car, all I had was a bicycle or I walked, and the Walmart was about a quarter mile away uh, from their house at that point. Um, now it, it, they had moved that Walmart in Lee Summit all the way over to the other side of town. It used to be just right next door to my aunt and uncle's, and I'd go over there all the time uh, for anything. And um, I went over there and was like looking at some of their games, just kind of looking at the games. Uh, you know, not really putting a lot on the Mortal Kombat, but I thought it looked cool and stuff. And they had some little cardboard boxes like in front of, you know, they had those cases with the glass on the front and they're locked. 
and um, they had some games in there, but on the floor they had these cardboard boxes um, that were about yay big, <laughs> and um, the one on the top was cut open, and I, I kind of just, you know, lifted it up and looked in there, and uh, it was Mortal Kombat. Uh, it was full of Mortal Kombat games. And, um, so, uh, I, I went up to the counter and I said, hey, uh, because I knew the game wasn't being released for about another week. I think the next week was when it was coming out. And this was like probably, uh, I mean, I was going to school on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, so it was probably a Tuesday or something of the week before. Um, or maybe Thursday, because most media comes out on Tuesday. So, I don't know about back then, but it does now. So, um, anyway, it was before. It was like a week before the game was going to be released. Or, or for retail sale. Uh, and um, I go up to the counter and I say, are those Mortal Kombat uh, for sale? And he goes, well, I don't know. He goes, well, if they're in the, if they're in the uh, SKU or whatever, then yeah, they're ready to go. And uh, he went back and he grabbed one and brought it up to the counter and beeped it. And it was this copy. And uh, it rang up. I don't remember how much it cost. But uh, I remember it was like a week before the game was supposed to be released. And um, I bought it. And so the very next day I went out to uh, Community College. It was like probably a full five days before it was getting released. And... Uh, I walk into the classroom with these other three or four guys that I had went to high school with um, that were now in college, out at the community college, and uh, I pull this game out, and I'm like, check this out, and I show them this, and they're like, what in the hell, you know, and I go, I told them the story that I just told you all, and um, yeah, so this is my copy that I got a, a week before release. Um, and I didn't write anything in the instruction booklet or anything. I'm trying to remember that the the blood code or how to turn it on. I think it's A B A C A B B or something. I don't remember it exactly, but I think I've got it somewhere. Um, so Mortal Kombat that had a little bit of a story to it. Uh, these two were both Toys R Us purchases. Um, I picked this up after I had gotten the Super Nintendo version. I actually like this version better, but uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd did a video on both versions, and he liked the Super Nintendo one better. Um, this one is hard, but I have beaten it, and that is Beavis and Butthead for the Genesis. And, um, like I said, it is, it is more difficult than the Nintendo one, but I have beaten it. And it looks like I have a couple of uh, three or four um, codes written down here uh, for our pass codes to log in. So I don't know. I might have, you know, one that's close to the end of the game. I, I'm, I may. So, And then this one is another one that I, I did not get this one a week early, but I got this one at Toys R Us. Uh, once I got my car, I started driving places and I drove out. Uh, to the Toys R Us um, and uh, pick this up and uh, it is the game and this was probably my favorite one of the three anyway uh, Mortal Kombat 2 for the Genesis and I got this at Toys R Us like I said um, complete and I really I got pretty good at this one for a while uh, I could take Shang Tsung, and I knew the moves to change into the other people, and then I also knew other people's fatality moves and stuff. So if I took Shang Tsung, I could morph into other people, and then you know use their fatalities or or what have you. So yeah, uh, Mortal Kombat 2. This game I bought from a guy that I worked with at a, at Hardee's before I got my uh, my job that I do now, and. Um, I really wasn't that hip to it. I really didn't care that much. It's kind of like <coughs> franchise characters. I'm not always uh, that hip to their games. Like Mario games, I'm not real hip to. Same thing with Sonic. I mean, I, I like Sonic okay, but I've, I've never been a huge fan. And he, he sold this to me for like a ridiculous price. And it was it was like he bought it retail, but he didn't like it. Uh, I think he sold it to me for like 10 or $15. 
but it was it was pretty much brand new, and that is Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Um, and it was complete. I think, uh, I don't remember what the deal was. He just he just wanted to sell it. He really didn't like it that much. Maybe he got it for a gift and didn't like it and decided to sell it so he could get money for it. Uh, who knows? But uh, I bought it from him for like 10 or $15. Um, okay. So, um, I'm down to my role-playing games now. Uh, there's four left. And um, how much time do we got left here? Oh boy. Okay. So anyway, um, I uh, I remember one time uh, my aunt came and picked me up from from school. Uh, it was this is like when I was like 18, before I had my car, and she came and picked me up from community college. And I think we went out to some mall. I don't remember what it was, but I really, really, really wanted to get Fantasy Star three. And um, I get out to the mall, and they had fantasy. I went to this place called Babbage's. I don't know if y'all remember Babbage's, but um, they they did have Fantasy Star three, but they had a new game that I knew uh, had just come out that I had seen, and I decided to buy it instead of Fantasy Star three. And at the time, I thought I was kind of kick. I kind of kicked myself. But when I got home and stuck it in, I, I couldn't uh, tear myself away from it. And I think I, I told you about this in the video when I was talking about um, the uh, kid that was playing, uh, what was it, Fortnite while the tornado came or whatever, and how gaming was an addiction. This game literally, it held me captive for about a week and a half or two weeks. And that is the game Shining Force. Uh, I bought this brand new retail uh, from Babbage's. Uh, it is complete, and I love this game. Uh, I beat it uh, twice um, for sure, and uh, I just I've always loved it. Um, I wish the oh, one of the games that I am missing that I truly do want uh, for my Genesis collection is Shining Force 2. Uh, I don't know how much it costs at this point, and I do have it on a Genesis Collection 360 disc. Genesis collection. I think we got about eight minutes left. I think I can wrap this up. So, so uh, later on, I did eventually uh, start going to Funko Land and stuff. Like I said, when I had a car to drive, um, and I went to Funko Land. And when back when Funko Land very first started, if they had the case on the wall, if you took it up there, they gave you the case and everything. Uh, after a while, it kind of got to where they would just give you the cartridge and not the actual case. Uh, but I was lucky because I scored a couple different things from Funko Land before they quit kind of giving you the whole deal. And one of them was my copy of Fantasy Star 3 that I picked up at Funko Land. Never beat this after all that hoopla. Um, never beat it. And then, and then also, uh, I picked up a copy at Funko Land of Fantasy Star 2. Uh, this one is not complete. It is missing the instruction book. Uh, I do have a map for it, but this map did not come with this. Uh, the map actually came with my copy of Fantasy Star for the uh, Sega Master System. Uh, instead of instructions, which sucked. But, you know, what are you going to do? So that brings us to our final role-playing game. And I keep checking the time, I know, but I don't want to ruin it. Uh, I paid a lot of money for this at the time. It felt like it was a lot. I mean, you're talking, plus inflation nowadays. Um, I paid $89.99 for this game, uh, brand new. And that is Fantasy Star 4. And I have beaten this game, and this game is epic, and I love this game. Um, it was worth $89.99. I don't know what it costs now. Uh, it is complete. It's in the stupid cardboard box, so I'm not going to take it out. It looks like I put scotch tape on the end of the box at one point to kind of uh, firm it up a little bit. Uh, it was back before I actually really kind of cared about stuff like that. 
So, uh, Fantasy Star 4, and I did beat this, like I said. So, those are my 12 that I had from when I was a kid. And, um, yeah, that's the Genesis collection. That's uh, games from Vintage Stock, Kmart's, Walmart's, Toys R Us's, uh, thrift stores, and, and uh, Funko Lands. Um, you know, you name it. So, uh, that is my full collection. And um, I appreciate y'all coming by. I hope this wasn't too... Um, I feel like I kind of rushed it. But it is a long video. So, um, I hope that it didn't feel too forced and that it didn't have uh it didn't feel like i was kind of just blowing through it uh but anyway folks thanks for coming by i do appreciate you hanging out sticking with us uh for when we do get videos up and um coming up on holiday uh for thanksgiving uh here and uh we're uh, gonna go into that so i have a short week this next week at work which is nice so uh, all right, folks, thanks for coming by. Uh, I hope you all uh, dig the video. Uh, leave comments. Tell me what some of your favorite Genesis uh, memories are or games. And uh, we'll uh, keep making vids. I'll try to come up with something uh, a little more, um, I don't know, fun. <laughs> I don't know. I had fun, I guess. So anyway, folks, thanks for coming by, and we'll see you next vid. Bye.